I'm excited to have with me today, Dr. Sabrina J. Ellis. She is a personal growth coach, mentor, keynote speaker, author of three books and former pastor. And she's here today to talk about her book, Wife Life, and share some financial health tips. Welcome, Dr. Ellis. Thank you. I am so pleased to have been invited and to be participating with you today. Yes, finally, we're here after so many times. <laughs> you know what, we're here and that's, that's right. Funny. Yeah, so I want to congratulate you on being the 2016 recipient of President Obama's Lifetime Achievement Award. Tell Thank the you. audience about that. Well, um, I was surprised when I was selected, um, but excited. And um, um, it was more or less representatives from his office um, that were handling that particular um, um, reward and award. And, and so when they came to Cleveland, um, it was an exciting time and presented the certificate and just talked a little bit about why I was receiving it. And it had more to do with my work in the community, um, uh, just reaching out to the community and, and serving the people in Cleveland. And so I was, I was really excited about having it. Yeah. I said it was the chief visionary officer of free to thrive. Is that correct? Uh, that is the, that is what I um, am operating as now and what I'm doing now. At the time um, of that uh, award, I was uh, serving as the executive pastor of, of our church. And um, I was responsible for much of the community activities mm -hmm. that, that we were involved in. So oh, that's yeah. wonderful, Dr. Ellis. I mean, as I said before, we went live or recording here, you have such an impressive resume. I mean, I, I mean, the audience is going to be in for a real treat if they're not already. Oh. Um, but <laughs> I like to talk about your book, Wife Life, and what in that was launched in 2019. Is that correct? Is that correct? What, correct. Yeah. Um, wife life, uh, securing your future. And it's basically, um, well, it, it, the, the subject matter really became a passion for me. I, I, I really um, kind of had, had my feelings in there when I started out because of some of the things that I experienced. So the book is really a guide um, and can be used as a tool for women who have husbands or who, who are married um, and um, not necessarily uh, at the point of uh, becoming widows or widowers, uh, but the, the whole concept and the idea is to address this issue before that time comes. Um, we know it's inevitable and statistics actually say that um, the males will go before the females, um, they, they die sooner. And so it became a concern for me because I watched so many women in my context um, who lost their husbands and their lives changed dramatically. And not just because of the loss in itself, certainly they were devastated to lose their spouse, but their lifestyle changed in that, um, of course, that means that income is no longer coming in. And because there was no preparation for that day, um, they ended up either actually living in poverty or very close to poverty. So when you go back to the, to the statistics concerning widows, especially in the United States, the reality of it is that those who become widows, statistics say that in within five years, four to five years, that widow is likely to end up living in poverty. Yes, and it's it's a subject you really don't really want to face or talk about, but we need to. And that's where your book is. It's, it's a self help self help 
guide and to right. really face it head on. And but like the, the book, like I like the title. How did you come up with the title, Dr. Alice? Like, why? Um, I, I love it. Uh, well, I, I did think through it. I continued to think through it. Um, I didn't want to leave it at wife life because that <laughs> suggests that I'm going to talk about how to do life as a wife. Um, <laughs> it it, it kind of leans in that direction, but it's a it's a it's a whole different concept than what many would be thinking about. Um, and so it's really about secu- it is about securing your future. And when I say I, I witnessed so many. Um, things in in my context uh, this doesn't necessarily have to just be separation by death it can be separation by divorce Mm -hmm. um and of course when you're on that day that wedding day you're not thinking about separation you don't want to think about the possibility of death even though the vows say till death do us part you're not you don't really think about that um you don't even really want to think about for better or for worse, because it's going to be better. We just, that day, it's all going to be better. (laughs) Um, But the the truth is, my personal experience as a teenager was my parents' divorce. And watching my mom um, work so hard to finish raising her three teenagers. And I, I didn't, I know how I felt then, but it that was sort of like the beginning of watching a pattern of events. And when I say my context, I grew up in church. I'm a PK. Um, so that's the um, kind of like an oxymoron when you think pastor, uh, divorced his wife, you know, nowadays it's just, you know, the thing, but then it wasn't that wasn't and so watching her uh, struggle um we our lifestyle changed drastically um we we you know and and it's not to suggest that any of the things that we had to go to are bad it's just they were different so for example after having lived in a house growing up now we have to move out of a house and go to an apartment. Um, after always having things that we needed at our you know, disposal, we go from access to food stamps. Mm-hmm. Well, the card now, but then it, you know, so you you get what I'm saying, how different, how how major the changes were. And then from there, just watching other women um, whose husbands passed and how differently their lives became. And when I started looking at it, um, it was not a couple of years ago, maybe just before the pandemic, um, uh, friends of ours, uh, well, the husband passed away and the wife was left to total devastation. I mean, it was really, really bad. And I was, even though we were frustrated about how he left her, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, well, how often are we going to, we, meaning women, going to let this happen? When do we wake up and take care of ourselves? And there, I think there's a way to do that, even, even if it's no more than being aware and then having the conversation with your spouse, your mate to talk about it. Um, I know everybody may not be able to have that an easy conversation, but, but you have to start somewhere. And if it looks like it's not going to be easy, that should be a signal that you need to be doing something for yourself. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And I mean, so how, how can we start? Like, I think like financial health tips, Dr. Ellis, like have a budget, um, you know, just, you know, have that talk. Um, but what else like would you suggest like well let me let me be clear that there are suggestions because I am not a financial planner I am not that financial expert what I did do though is I in in trying to get my own house in order I did spend time with financial planners and those who 
uh, were uh, specialized in insurance and those kinds of things. So I, first of all, I would recommend, highly recommend um, a financial planner if you don't have one. And unfortunately, mo uh, many times people think, well, that sounds like that's something for people with a lot of money. No, mm -hmm. have any at all. You need somebody to help you figure out what to do with it and what are the best places to put it. Um, if you've been accustomed to spending everything, you need to slow down and figure out, you know, what I hate, because right now I need to redo mine, and that is have a budget. Yes. Well, a lot of people don't like to talk about it. It's a bad word, but it's helpful in your planning. And so a financial planner is going to talk to you about what is priority. Just basic life insurance. There are so many people who don't have life insurance um, for a lot of different reasons, but not only should you have life insurance, but you should make sure as the wife that you are the beneficiary on that policy. Um, so I'm not, I'm not here to say what type of insurance you should have. That's part of the family planning and deciding to do what works for your, for your family, what works for your household. But what I am here to say is you need a life insurance policy. Yes. And also like, would you suggest like counseling too? Like, you know, um, if it's difficult to speak to your, your husband, um, you know, going to counseling to, you know, to, to come to terms or come to an uh, agreement uh, with, uh, you know, with the will or with, um, you know, et cetera. Absolutely. There are many parts to it. I think when you get started with the basics and, and I, how far you have to go also depends on your assets. I mean, yes. if you may not have to, if you don't own a lot of property and you don't have a lot of assets, then, then the basic things, budgeting, savings, insurance policy, and who gets your stuff when you leave here. But counseling could be a very large part of it if it needs to go there. Um, you know, there's probably gonna always be one person, I was that person for such a long time that doesn't wanna talk about the dying, the death and the dying. You know, let's not, I don't wanna hear it. I don't wanna talk about it. But then you get to a place where you realize well, maybe we should have this conversation because then we can, do all the planning, put everything together and just pack it away, just put it away. And then when it's time, it's there. Yes. Uh, but there are so many pieces to it um, when you get down to it, be, they're, they're the legal parts and pieces that should be addressed. For example, let me, let me say this now because you probably don't know this, this the book was finished in 2019. Yes. Um, by the end of 2020, I became the widow. Oh. Totally unexpected. Um, just blew me away. And there were days that I felt like maybe writing the book, I jinx, jinxed myself or something. <laughs> but I I know better than that. But what I wanted to say as it relates to that, um, my husband and I we we were selling our home we were in the process of finishing all of that um and i think it ultimately sold maybe a couple of months after he passed we had moved to another home um and i reached out to a probate attorney because my agent wanted to make sure that everything was okay with the sale and that I wasn't going to face anything unexpected with family members or anybody for that matter coming along trying to lay claim to any benefits. She was only, she wanted the deed, a copy of the deed. And the only thing that she was looking for, just one term, right to survivorship. And if my name was there, I didn't have to do anything else. She said, you don't even have to read a will because it's named in the deed. This property is yours and it doesn't go to anybody else. You have full clearance. And I was like, so there is a will, but she said, you don't need to read it. 
you're it. But I didn't know that. I mean, I, I felt like I was going to get everything. My, my Our names were always on everything. Every bank account, our names were on. So I had access to all of that. Um, but there are so many little things that people don't understand. Because if you're not listed as the one that has the right to survivorship, you might end up in probate court. Mm. And that's going to drag out. It can go for years. Um, yeah, if if you're not if you're not listed as an equal uh, person on the bank account, there is also this thing called a beneficiary for bank accounts. If you're not on the account or listed as the beneficiary, you can't touch that money. It just stays with the bank. Yeah. Wow. So conversations, yeah, I learned a lot after becoming the widow, although I was learning before that. So I knew that once my husband passed and I learned this information from a probate attorney, I went to the bank now and made sure that my daughters are listed as beneficiaries. Mm. I didn't list them as, you know, like on my account. They don't have access, yeah. but if something happens to me, whatever is there, they can get. Yes. So, wow. so that's why talking to a financial counselor um, um, and any other counseling that may be necessary, it's important because you've got to learn something that you didn't already know. Yeah, it's great information, Dr. Ellis. I mean, People want a copy of your book. Where can where can they go in your other books as well? You know, well, actually, you can go to sabrinajellis.com. Um, I'm excited right now. It's they're not ready yet, but in a few weeks, the book will be audible and an ebook. And it has taken me all of this time to get to it because the book was um, the year the book was released. I didn't get involved in everything that went along with the publishing because we were in the pandemic. Yes. And so the conference that we were going to release the book in was canceled and everything. And so now I'm just now coming full circle, but it is, you can go to sabrinajellis.com to purchase the book and it is on Amazon. And in a few weeks it will be audible and it will be an ebook. Congratulations. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Dr. Ellis? Oh, uh, no, not really. Um, this has been, you know, I guess you can tell I'm a little passionate about it oh. because it's not so much about getting it to the widow as it is about the person who is married. And it's something to think about earlier. I think it should be thought about earlier more than later. Um, I wish I had started the planning much sooner, but I am very grateful that I started when I did so that I can live. I don't, I'm not ready to go just because my husband is gone. No, I, it was such a pleasure speaking with you today and I love you to come back, you know, and I'd love to. Yeah. So your wife life securing your future and you have, and the women came first, the advancement renewal in the African-American Pentecostal story church, right? Right. 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 Uh, <laughs> those were the earlier books, the advancing um, church renewal was a result of my dissertation um, for the doctor of ministry program and that I was a part of. And then the second book um, was written because just like everywhere else, there women deal with the issue of being in ministry and uh, so many people believing that women are not called to ministry. So that book addresses that subject. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ellis. Thank you. I appreciate you having me, Christine.